Hey guys, welcome back to my Patreon exclusive video. This month's video, I'm going to be talking about which area, cities, and countries you should be targeting if you want to study abroad and then after you want to get a job abroad and get permanent, like, you know, work visa or permanent residency or possibly citizenship if you want to. So, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to do it if you're going to major in computing science because that gives you highest probability of you getting a job and also a visa afterwards because software engineering computer science major is a, the highest demand job in the entire world and then that gives you the most likelihood of getting work visa in uh, western countries like canada or germany or netherlands so i'm going to talk about that and also i'm going to add my personal experience. So I know you subscribe to my Patreon because you wanted to get insider's views about how to go about study abroad and working abroad, living abroad in the future, like I'm doing right now. So obviously, you're going to be thinking about Canada because I studied in Canada, so you know about Canada. Canada, United States, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, Germany, which is where I live and work right now, as most of you guys know, and Netherlands, Denmark, or Sweden, Norway, something like that, right? Like about 10 countries, like those Western countries, you're going to be probably targeting. And out of those countries, two countries going to be off the list immediately because of the visa situation, which are United States, United Kingdom. And also, I want to add Australia as well, because work visa situation is getting tighter in Australia. So three countries out from the list because of the visa and also money situation wise. United States is the most expensive, UK is the second most, and probably Australia is the third most expensive countries to get a CS degree major. Uh, so ex exclude those countries. And you might be wondering, hey, but like, I want to work in Silicon Valley. Or maybe, hey, I want to work in Sydney. Hey, I want to work in London. Okay, so if you want to work in Silicon Valley, it's going to be 10 years commitment. Five years in university and one year, like, like four years in university plus one year internship. So like five years education. And after, if you're lucky and if you're like top notch student, CS, you know, then you might be able to get a job offer from like an American companies. And then if you're lucky, then you get job a work visa as well. But after three, four, five years of working, if you're lucky, you need to apply for green card as a wife. Otherwise, the work visa is going to expire after two times renewal. So it's going to be 10 years commitment and you pay like a down payment of like at least $150,000, right? $150,000 for American universities education. Right. And after that, you might risk having to go back to Japan because or going back to your country because the United States work visa situation is pretty tough. And also it's the most competitive country in the entire world when it comes to computer science and software engineering. So you're basically competing with masters and a PhD students, PhD graduate students from top brains students, top universities from China, India. They're working so hard, studying so hard, they're like geniuses. They're getting recruited by Google, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, uh, those big companies after they're graduating from American universities in PhD and their masters. So you're basically competing with those people, right? So you're gonna be really good to get work visa and a job offer. So must have 100% and 150% is you do internships while you are studying in American university. If you really want to go on, on that route of like going to American university and then risk having to go back to like, you know, your own country, because if you were not successful, then like if you're not competitive, then you, you, you don't, you don't get job offer. And even if you get job offer, it's government's option. It's, it's, it's up to government, American government to give you work visa or not. And same as UK, it's up to UK government to give you work visa. Even if a company wants to hire you and it get and it gives you a job offer, it doesn't mean you can work. A lot of software engineers, if software engineers get rejected with the work visa, so they need to go, you know, their job offer is like gone. 
So for that reason, just exclude UK, United States and Australia from the beginning get go. Doesn't mean you cannot work in those countries forever. You can always try after, but to establish a, a base, you know, home base, long term, like a medium long term, uh, um, a place to live in and then get work visa and get settled down and get like few years experience so that you get more skills. It's like you, you build more skills and resumes so that you have more job opportunities coming to you after two, three years. So until after three years mark, you need to first go through the front door, which is the hardest to get in after university. So with that said, excluding those cities and countries, what I would say is Canada and Germany, Netherlands, those three countries are the top when it comes to easiness of getting work visa and also job demand in general and uh, English speaking countries like factor. So Netherlands um, work visa is typically easier than Canada. So in terms of difficulty wise, hardest is Canada and the second hardest is Netherlands and the easiest is Germany. In Germany, if you get job offer as a software engineer, you're gonna get work visa most likely. So you don't need work visa to get job offer which is a case for Canada. In Canada, you need to get, you need to have work visa to get a job offer. If not, company needs to provide like a labor market assessment or whatever that's called. They need to prove that they were looking for some talents by posting ads, but they couldn't find it. And therefore they need to hire a foreign worker like you. So it's a special case and uh, company needs to do extra, some paperwork and stuff. So it's a little more complex than like German company giving you a job offer in Germany. Because in Germany, they give you a job offer and you just, you just, you just have a job offer and you go to a visa office and you get a visa. Given that your payment, like your salary is like, uh, more than like 50,000, 55,000 euros, then you get EU blue card, which is like a work visa. Netherlands, so pretty easy. And also they speak English pretty well. So uh, job demand wise, Amsterdam, Berlin, Munich, and uh, Canada wise, Toronto, Vancouver. However, I would say, um, I would say, um, I think it's better to target uh, European adult cities because university education fee in Germany is free. Even if you're an international student, you are free to study computer science with a little bit of caveat. If you're studying bachelor in Germany, most of them are teaching in German, not English. But if you're studying computer science in masters and PhD, they're gonna teach you in English. So if you wanna study bachelor's in C, uh, bachelor uh, computer science in English, then probably better to go to university in Netherlands where they're gonna teach you CS in bachelor in English, although it's not completely free, but you need to pay like maybe 2000 euros a year. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cheap. Whereas in Canada, the cheapest, probably one of the cheapest university, which is SFU, Simon Fraser University, which I went, you still need to pay at least 20,000 Canadian dollars a year, plus living costs. So 20,000 is like a minimum, right? It's going up every year. 20,000 Canadian dollar, whereas in Netherlands, it's $2,000 a year, 2,000 euros a year. In Germany, it's free, but a bachelor, it's not English most of the time. So to maximize your, you know, in terms of uh, return of investment, in terms of like uh, education costs and also high likelihood of getting a job after and work visa and everything included, you want to situate yourself in the bigger cities where there are like big companies and the big industries there already. So you go to like, let's say my kind of game plan around that, that game plan that I can think of right now is I'm seldom like go to university where they teach computer science degree in English. So Netherlands, it could be Denmark, it could be Sweden, Norway. I don't know too much about Sweden and Norway, but they probably teach computer science in English and then probably education fee is probably free or maybe 2000 euros a year maximum. And then get a job in Amsterdam or you can get a job in Berlin or Munich. You try, right? 
you get work visa. All right, good. So by the time when you get a job and then get a few years of experience, you're not going to have as much student debt as studying in Canada because Canada minimum $20,000, right? And in Vancouver, the other big companies coming in, however, not as many jobs as in Berlin or Amsterdam, I would say, Vancouver. Toronto is a little bigger, but I would say in terms of like education costs, UT is like $50,000 a year, University of Toronto. So I don't think it's doable. I don't think you'd pay, you want to pay $50,000 a year for computer science education. So that's my key points here in this video. Um, I would say I would aim um, European cities and European universities where they teach you computer science in English plus tuition fees of like less than $2,000 a year. And then get a job with a work visa, get a few years experience, and after a few years of experience, like two, three years, then it's your time to decide if you want to move to another city or maybe try, let's say, London or San Francisco, Seattle, because by the time you have like three, four years of experience, probably Google is going to be uh, sending you messages about, hey, um, this, there's an opportunity in Seattle, blah, 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 San Fran, or like London, whatever, Berlin. And that's a time you can choose. Maybe if you want to go, really want to go to the United States, then you, can, you could try. But at the same time, welcome visa situation is tough. Housing costs are pretty expensive in San Fran and Seattle. Um, Amsterdam is pretty expensive as well. Berlin is cheaper. But every, every year, rent is going up. So that's my strategy for you guys. Um, I think the best case scenario for me uh, if I would do it again, it would be like if I want to be cost sensitive for my education costs, then maybe I would go to like university in Netherlands where I can, I can get education less than 2,000 euros a year, right? It's pretty cheap. So in four years or three years, you only pay less than $8,000, which is pretty doable. And they teach you in English, right? And then you get internship experience while you are in university, so you build up your resume, and when you graduate, you pay maximum like seven, 8,000 uh, euros for tuition. You have internship experience, and then you apply for a full-time job, and then you get work visa and full-time job. And the, let's say Amsterdam or Berlin or Munich at the time, you probably have more choice. And then you work up your ass, you know, what your way up in two, three years, and then if you want to try other cities, then uh, free, feel free to do that. So by the time you have that, those experiences, you're going to be only paying $8,000, which is pretty cool, as opposed to, in my case, I paid $20,000 a year times four years. So like it was like $60,000 Canadian for Canadian University by the time I graduated. So I needed to pay off that $60,000 debt or like a loan. It took me two years to pay back that student loan, right? So if you graduate from like a, a European university, then you don't need to pay $60,000 debt. So your starting point is much ahead than having that much debt. So that's a kind of strategy plus, you know, better to get educated in English speaking university. So that's what I would do. It's pretty, um, I don't, I don't think many people know about this, but, um, this is definitely a path. Uh, I can, I can think about based on people that I know. I've talked to many people and uh, get information about, oh, this university is free, or like you know, people doing internships and stuff like that. So just wanted to let you guys know um, this is uh, some path, and I definitely, you know, recommend you do research and like CS bachelor degree in Netherlands, or Denmark, Sweden, Norway uh, for low cost, and then do internships for sure. With that said, if you have any questions, uh, comments, opinions, uh, your uh, perspective, do let me know in the comment section. I'd like to share some information if you have more. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.